make sure the water's Ooh, yeah. natural rodent control, organic rodent control. They will mm -hmm. keep the mice away and they will show them to you. They will catch them and bring them and mm -hmm. you'll know they're doing their job. So tell me who you are and what your organization does. Sure. So my name is Janice Saban. I'm the president of our Community Cat Rescue. I've been doing rescue since 2008. I first learned about feral cats. Um, my sister kept telling me she had this feral mama cat who kept having babies. And I said, well, what is a feral cat? <laughs> so I found out. So then I started trapping. I learned how to trap and I worked with a couple of women who showed me the ropes of trapping and rescuing cats, how to hold them in large wire dog crates, putting them into adoption venues for, you know, to be adopted because we very rarely we do adoptions because we don't have time. We're more of an emergency, urgent rescue. We pull cats and kittens from feral colonies and we spay and neuter the feral males and females. We pull the kittens so they don't turn out feral. We assess them, then we flea treat them, we vaccinate them, the kittens, and then we transfer them to adoption venues. Okay. We work with like the Cat's Cradle, Cat Adoption Team, the Oregon Humane Society, Northwest Animal Companions. We don't have time for adoptions. We go out, we trap, we go under things to rescue kittens and cats. We will trap injured and sick or we'll drop trap them like the drop trap Elmer Fudd used to okay, use. Okay. And um, because Box on a stick. <laughs> yep. Sometimes you can't you can't get the sick cat to go into a trap. So we have to drop trap them or corral them with a blanket or a towel or something. And sometimes it's really sad because they can't be saved. And um, we also help with and promote trap neuter return for feral cats. We like to empower people by loaning them traps, showing them how to trap. We encourage spay and neuter for all feral cats, community cats. If there are friendly cats, we will pull them so they don't have to live out in the wild like that. We encourage people too, if they know of a feral colony to feed them, to start feeding them because we have actually gotten a few cats that are starving, emaciated, and just, it's so sad. Yeah. There's not enough people rescuing cats. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Now, trap, neuter, return, or release? Is that, what's the? Release, yes. Okay. We, ideally, the perfect situation is the feral cats have an excellent caregiver that provides food, water, and shelter. That is a trap, neuter, release. Return means return them back to their colony. Mm -hmm. That's why we, it's TNR. On a rare occasion, they need to be removed or relocated. And that's what we've done with these Operation Big Cats. We call them Operation Big because there were so many out there and we're still not done pulling them. We still need barn homes for probably 13, 15 more cats. Now, feral cats in general, do they make really good candidates for, for farm cats or barn cats? They do. They don't need much care. Did they just need good food and water? You will rarely see them. They, you know, they don't want to go into your house. They just want to live in the wild in which they were born. And yes, they do make good candidates for barn cats, nurseries, wineries, garages, shops. They need to be acclimated to the property for at least 28 days so that they stay. For 28 days acclimation, you have a 90% chance of them sticking around, which is what we go for. We, we try and set everybody up for success. If you only do it for three weeks, you only have a 70% chance of them staying. Two weeks is 50. So we go for the full 28 days. It's a long time. 
but in the long run it's worth it because they're going to stay and so yes they are good candidates to keep it they're organic rodent control they're natural rodent so you don't have to use poisons you mm -hmm. know you don't have to use traps you know with even mouse traps you could trap a bird and hurt it and will they get some birds they might you know but you shouldn't take offense to it because people that's what they do that's what they do and people eat turkey and they eat chicken and it's a cat's natural instinct to eat a bird to catch a bird they toy with them you know they're carnivores yeah. they're going to do it hunters yes they are hunt cats are natural born hunters how often do you get feral cats we don't get them unless they're in danger mm -hmm. um these cats for instance were in a rural clackamas county area and they had no caregiver because the caregiver moved mm. without getting them spayed or neutered so a few cats turned into 75 cats oh. they started disappearing nobody was feeding them somebody finally contacted us about them so we went out to assess it and so we start we've pulled 23 so far that's a big job it is a big job because we have to take them in to get spayed neutered vaccinated mm -hmm. they get an ear tip to show they've been yeah spayed and neutered for a trap neuter return and but how often not often because the ideal trap neuter return situation is they have good caregivers somebody that feeds and waters them every day and provides shelter mm -hmm. and protects mm -hmm. them so we did bring um emerald is her name the tortoise mm -hmm. shell mm -hmm who is bonded with um, Mob Boss, they called him. There's a new Bob, Mob Boss out there now. He's a black one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And that happens when you pull feral cats. Yeah. More will Another come. Yeah. So, but we're trying to clear out that area because the city doesn't want them there and mm -hmm. there's no regular feeders. Yeah. So this is Mob Boss. Now, these two cats in particular, mm -hmm. um, Mob Boss and Emerald. Yes. How did they get their names? Well, we um, usually our fosters pick up the names for the kittens or the cats that we get in and rescue. But we've been so busy lately because it's kitten season. I took pictures of the last six that we trapped and I put them on our Facebook page for our community cat rescue. And I said, okay, these six need names. And so people just started throwing out names. And Mob Boss already had his name though. Mm. Um, the people out were he came from they called him that because he was the leader he came out first he would like oh what's what i'm looking for he would he would assess the situation before because they communicate they will tell the others okay it's clear come out yeah. let's eat go back go away something's wrong um they know when they're getting trapped and they um and so that's how he got his name, mm -hmm. Mob Boss. And Emerald got her name from her followers because of her eyes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told you about how to stretch the wet food yeah. to make it like a chili bean or stew mixture. It keeps them healthy because mm -hmm. feral cats don't drink enough water. And the biggest thing for cats when they get sick is dehydration. Mm -hmm. If a cat gets dehydrated, it's gonna go, it's gonna fail quick. So use this as beans. Mm -hmm. Is it different for young cats versus older cats? I mean, will older cats be hardier because they've been around longer or? Uh, as far as catching mice? As far as, uh, you know, worries, worries about sickness or dehydration? Oh, no, well, actually kittens will fade quicker mm -hmm. if they become dehydrated. Mm -hmm. uh, kittens, can fade well any cat but kittens especially like within 24 hours if something goes wrong mm -hmm. they're gone within 24 hours 48 hours that's pretty quick but with an adult cat you know you might have 72 hours mm. um we just rescued one theo if you follow our page you'll see theo mm -hmm. we don't know what happened to him he was a community cat somebody left him when he moved they thought he was feral but he's not mm. and he disappeared for a couple of months. Nobody knows what happened to him. Um, he showed up like within a week ago 
we got him and completely dehydrated. Yes. I feel that somebody kept him indoors and was doing odd things to him because he had wounds that showed to be not bite marks but like slice marks oh boy so he um if they would have kept him longer he would have died uh in fact he's at our vet right now mm -hmm. and just yesterday she had to literally pull him back to life because just overnight her not checking she was checking on him but she went to bed woke up and he was he was she was he was nearly dead she said uh, and that's from dehydration she did his blood work first thing it showed was dehydration mm -hmm. so it's very important to keep these guys hydrated they don't drink a lot of water because they're going to be out here running hunting and they're going to be afraid of people mm -hmm. um so you mix the kibble with the wet and put water in it and make it like a chili bean or stew but not soup and that will keep them hydrated okay okay to make it stretch ideally you just give them wet food sure but you know not everybody right. you know can afford wet all the time every day because it does get expensive mm -hmm. but to keep these guys doing their jobs and to keep them healthy you have to keep them hydrated sure and you have to keep them fed now in a month when we let them about a month when we let them out of the shelter the their uh catio mm -hmm. We do have a creek down in the ravine. Will the cats seek out a body of water like that to hydrate over coming back to their you know, water dish? Well, they may go down there and investigate, but my hope is that when they get out of the acclimation tank or the acclimation catio, that they're gonna come this way and they won't go down into those woods. Mm -hmm. um, that's ideally what you want because if they go down there you know it's they could go check it out they probably will go check out the creek but will they use it as a body of water to drink from maybe you know because cats like running water in fact when they kill out in the wild if they kill something next to the water they consider the water contaminated so that's why they don't like their food next to their water. Hmm. But they may or may not go check it out. You know, they may see some fish and try and get the fish. You know, they may see some critters down there. But ideally, you're going to want them to stay up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they might. But always provide fresh food and water and put the water in this yeah. Yeah. stew-like chili yeah. bean mixture you're going to make. So is there anything we should watch for if we can't tell if they're drinking their water enough or just to know if they're not well i mean one of the first symptoms you would notice would be they're not eating if you notice they have goopy eyes mm -hmm. or a runny nose okay. you know like when a child gets a cold okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. but they love the wet with like the chili bean mixture is all i can refer it to yeah. chili for cats but they love it i'll bring the carriers if you guys want to get the food so those two boxes of food in that bag okay and they've been flea treated i just flea treated them i did mob boss again because we don't apply it correctly because we can't handle them i just oh, gave them okay. some more Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're, I'm gonna put the carriers in there. Well, why don't we do their food first? Okay. So that way we only have to open the door a couple of times yeah. compared to multiple. Yeah. And you'll wanna do that when you're doing their litter box and their food. The less times you open the door, the better. Because oh. your biggest fear is escape. And when you do pick out kibble, you know, if you're gonna give it to them, if you can just give them wet, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you give them kibble, you know, to make it like the mixture I explained, get a good quality grain-free yeah. kibble because a lot of them are just the first ingredient is corn, yeah. wheat, or soy, mm -hmm. fillers. We don't feed any of our animals that crop. Okay, good. Other so, than, of course, chickens, they get some right. corn stuff. Some of the uh, cat food actually has, if it's spray, it's different colors, it's spray painted. 
they spray like meow mix it's spray painted interesting um, Beneful hmm. dog food is spray painted yeah it is okay so yeah breakfast lunch and dinner okay you can give them a little bit more than that but okay. they may not eat right away yeah because they're a little in shock probably. yep you don't have to do the water like this every meal I would do it for breakfast and dinner, okay. but for lunch you don't have to. Okay. Um, just make sure there's fresh water, but um, this will stretch it, keep them hydrated, especially in the summer. Okay. Okay. You can even put a little bit less water in there. Okay. That was quite a bit actually, because see how it's soupy? <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. Okay, so let's get it put in there. And the food away from the water. Yep. Okay. So we hope they're just going to go into the new carrier. I'm probably just gonna come in here. Sure, sure. Oh, my boss is heading up. So 28 days from okay. today, I'll you'll need to you. figure out how you're going to do a cat door. So this will be their safety area if something is chasing them. You'll continue to feed and water in here and their litter box. So you know they're coming. You may or may not ever see them. Yeah. They'll just come. They'll eat. They'll use their litter box. Again, when it's really hot, a little mist of sprinkler in there. Yeah. And be good to them and they'll be good to you. This is a very nice structure. So now I'd like to get your guys' picture. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Hi. Slow blanks. We'll mm -hmm. let them know that you're friendly and that they, you like them. Well, that's an interesting tip. Yep, is that just a cat instinct or a... It's a cat behavior. They, yeah, they let you know that they like you. They do a slow blank. Okay. They don't like direct eye contact because that's a form of intimidation. Right. Just move slow and don't let them out. Okay. Just be very careful when you go in there. Yeah. And I would keep this covered, like I said, for a couple of days. Let them get used to being in there. Oh, what was that? cows yeah, oh. yeah there's a farmer that leases cows. nearby fields yeah okay you guys this is it it's okay see how he just slow blinked at mm -hmm. me i slow blinked mm -hmm. him it's okay hi girl she had a wound on her leg when we trapped mm -hmm. her okay she was limping we took her to the vet she didn't need an antibiotic the vet said it was healing mm -hmm. but if you notice anything let me know okay, okay. we if one escapes, you let me know immediately, mm -hmm. but just be very careful. Okay, so straighten up the bedding, make sure the water's oh, yeah. clean and fresh. Mm -hmm. Stay back always. Okay, spotter coming out. If they're ever on the ground when you go in there and not in the carrier, don't open the door. They're just standing out here, they'll probably want to go in the carrier or up high where they won't, uh, will they feel, feel a little more safe? They feel cats like height mm -hmm. yeah so they prefer to perch but if you come out to do this and they're down there on the floor and not in the carrier don't open the door okay they'll okay. probably scurry up or yeah. in the carrier when you come out my guess is they're going to stay out of the carrier because they think if they get in the carrier they're off again yeah mm -hmm. you know because they've so been trapped she's indicated. been taken to the yeah. vet after being trapped and the night is when they're going to be more active mm. feral cats are nocturnal Okay, you guys, aren't they pretty together? Yeah, they are. You're okay, he's glaring me down. <laughs> yeah. Cat care in general, is there any tips you might suggest for uh, our folks? Cats' diets should be 90% moisture. That means wet food 90% of the time. Even if you mix water in it, because like humans, animals don't drink enough water. 
cats will get dehydrated quickly and that will start to cause medical issues kidney disease kidney failure renal failure a lot of veterinarians won't tell you don't give your cat kibble because you know like anything if you have a healthy cat the vet's going to have less business there are vets that will tell you kibble's bad don't give them kibble because when kibble when it's dehyd when it's digested by the cats the cats become dehydrated now <clears throat> If we do decide to get more cats in the future, is there any uh, like territorial issues with these cats? Are they going to not accept a new cat into into the mix? If this one, let's say, was a um, not a feral cat, more of a friendly cat, would uh, would it be at a disadvantage, or would would even neighbor cats be at any risk from a, a feral cat? Feral cats are actually nicer to each other than domestic cats. You can put two domestic cats in a room and they're gonna fight because it is a territorial issue. A lot of people say, oh, well, my cat doesn't like other cats. Well, you have to acclimate them. You have to keep them separate for a couple of weeks. But you can put 10 feral cats in a room. You could put 10 feral cats in that little catio. They're not gonna fight. They're just gonna huddle because they know their safety in numbers. So as far as bringing a domestic cat onto your property, I would suggest you keep it inside because it's not gonna have the smarts that these feral cats have. You know, they'll get lost or predators. Sure. As far as your neighbor's cats, your neighbor's cats would pick on these guys before they would go after them. Because like I said, they know their safety in numbers. So yeah. Okay, that's good to know. No. Sure. Yeah. I would let your neighbors know that you have these yeah. cats. They've got tipped ears that shows they've been trapped and fixed, vaccinated. And um, yeah, I would just let everybody know, one, because you have them. You don't want anybody hurting them or putting traps out or poisoned. Yeah. And if you did bring more ferals in, um, that was the other question. I mean, we have more from the same colony. We have four left that we have trapped and we have at least nine to 12 more that we have to pull. They're already bonded. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be an issue. That's a good question I was gonna ask. Mm -hmm. What is the importance of and how, what is the process of bonding cats so that they'll, they'll uh, want to be together? Well, you know, it's funny because the process of bonding them is them just hanging out together. For instance, we just placed Mufasa and honey with Sheba. These are feral cats. Mufasa came from where these guys came from. And we got this female feral. We didn't know if she was feral. We didn't know her situation. She came from a hoarder. We didn't know if she was feral or if she was just scared. Turns out she was feral. So we put her with Mufasa and we, we hold them if we have to in extra large wire dog crates put together so they have room to roam around in. And so we put her in there with Mufasa and within two or three days, they were in the same carrier. Mm. So males and females will bond quicker. We always try and place a female with a male or one male yeah. and two females, you know, cause like anything, boys and girls, mm. they don't have to be from the same colony to bond feral cats. Well, same with domestics if you acclimate them correctly, but they're like anything, they like companionship yeah. and there's safety in numbers for the ferals. The process would be to bond them, would be to make sure that it's a male and a female and you put them in together. We even did it, I think it was last year, the year before, Fred and Misha, different colony. Fred came from Southeast Portland, running like crazy all over the street, had no home, fighting for his food. He needed a dental procedure with the, with the vet, and we did that. And then Misha came from a rural Clackamas County area. Her caregiver moved, left all these cats, and Misha had a litter, and the new homeowners didn't want her, so we trapped her, and we put her with Misha, or with Fred, and within days they were bonded. And they went to a backyard setting. The family had, had a pig, they had, um, did they have chickens? Yeah, they had a pig, they had chickens. It was just a backyard setting in the city. So it's fairly easy. We just do it with the boys and girls. Sure, sure. 
Now, <clears throat> most of our animals are kept in, in place, you know, in the chicken run or in chicken tractors or uh, the rabbits in their cages. So I'm not too worried about cats going after, after them. But we right now have our turkey kind of free ranging in there with the goats. Mm -hmm. Would a feral cat go after a turkey that, you know, that big? As many as I've placed, I've never heard. Well, in fact, we just um, placed patients with Minnow and Brad Pitt. They came from two different colonies. Brad Pitt and Minnow were kittens and we could not tame them. After four or five months, there's no taming a feral kitten. You just can't do it unless you have years to do it or maybe even a full year. But we don't have the time to do that, so we just look for safe places. Now, uh, Brad Pitt, Minnow, and Patience went to another backyard, but they had turkeys and chickens. And not once have they ever said they've gone after the chicken, or the t turkeys or the chickens. Oh, I mean, they had turkeys roaming their yard. Yeah. And no. It should not be a problem. I don't think it will be. Okay, good. But if it is, you know, let me know. But I don't think it will be. I've never heard that. So, yeah. Thanks again. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for giving them a good home. And if you know anybody else, let us know. All right. All Sounds right. good. And we'll put the uh, link to your site for Anybody who's interested in, in cats might uh, in the area might need a natural rotor services. control. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Or if you need help with trap, neuter, return a feral colony, if you have a feral colony or know of a feral colony, reach out to us because in one year, no, I'm sorry, in seven years, one female cat with her offspring will produce. 420,000 cats. 420,000? In seven years. Hmm. Um, the Feral Cat Coalition of Oregon has a mathematical equation to where in 10 years it's over a million. Because if that's, if that's if that one mama has a, a litter of four, and then those four have four, et cetera, et cetera. So spay and neuter, reach out to somebody. Trapping is so easy. We have 70 and 80 year old women who contact us and they're out there trapping and drop trapping and it's it's easy. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do it, it's fun. It actually becomes addicting sometimes. <laughs> it's and, an adventure. Um, it, it is an adventure, yes it is. So yeah, let us know and thank you. All right.